Entering November of the original 177 assemblies, only 12 remained in the southeast sector of the Corps. These were the most difficult to remove because of molten material that solidified in this area. At the end of the year, only a portion of one assembly remained. No longer recognizable as a fuel rod assembly, but as a 200-pound mass, it has resisted all efforts at removal with the current defueling tools. When removed, the original core region will have been defueled. As a result of defueling operations, a large amount of debris relocated to the lower CSA and lower head, as illustrated in the model. Late 1987 video inspections show the hole in the baffle plates that resulted from the flow of molten material. It measures five feet vertically and almost two and a half feet horizontally. An estimated 10,000 pounds of debris is located behind the baffle plates. Inside the reactor, the remaining fuel is generally located in areas which are hard to reach. Much of it is in the bottom head of the reactor vessel. In order to get to this material, it was necessary to cut sizable holes in the five plates which constitute the lower core support assembly. To do this, two different tools were used. The top plate is the lower grid rib section upon which the fuel elements rest. The core drilling machine, which had been used last in 1987 to obtain cylindrical core samples of the melted fuel in the reactor, was modified to cut stainless steel. A drill bit, which worked like a hole cutting saw, was used to sever the ribs. The plate was cut into four sections this way. The pieces were inspected for adherent fuel, cleaned, and removed from the reactor vessel. Two pieces were counted with gamma detectors to verify that little or no fuel remained on them. All four pieces were placed into one of the core flood tanks for storage. Although the core bore machine worked well for the first plate, fuel debris near the stainless steel reduced its efficiency. Consequently, it was decided to cut the remaining plates with an automated plasma arc cutting system. The plasma arc cutter was tested on one of the baffle plates which surround the core region. The test demonstrated the system was fully capable of cutting stainless steel plates under 40 feet of borated water. The core bore machine was used to drill around the in-core guide tubes and support posts to separate them from the next plate. Using the plasma arc system, the lower grid distributor plate was then cut into pieces, cleaned, gamma scanned, and stored in the core flood tank. The biggest challenge for the plasma arc cutter was the lower grid forging, a 13-inch thick slab of steel with numerous flow holes. This massive plate was severed into four pieces by cutting through the ligaments between the flow holes. The pieces were then cleaned, gamma scanned, and placed into the core flood tank with the others. At the end of 1988 and into early 1989, disassembly of the lower internals continued using the automated plasma arc cutting system. The in-core guide support plate was cut up and removed from the reactor vessel. And the flow distributor was also cut up. The final task for the plasma arc system was the cutting of the reactor vessel baffle plates. While the lower internals were being disassembled, shipping of the filled canisters to Idaho continued. During 1988 and early 1989, a total of 55,000 pounds was shipped, bringing the total to 77% of the core removed and 71% shipped to Idaho since the beginning of 1988. Another defueling effort continued in parallel this year. Less than 1,000 pounds of core debris was transported out of the reactor vessel during the accident and to remote locations within the reactor coolant system. Continuing ex-vessel defueling efforts concentrated on three of these areas. In the pressurizer, a vacuum system was used to remove the loose debris which had collected at the bottom. After the loose material had been vacuumed out, there was still some rock-like material remaining. This material was removed one piece at a time by the Mini Rover, a miniature submarine. 
Mini Rover is equipped with a color television camera and a small grapple tool. In the J-Legs, the short pipes which connect the reactor coolant pumps to the steam generators, miniature Geiger-Muller probes were deployed. Measurements were made to determine the quantity of core material in the area, which is inaccessible to the defueling tools. In the steam generators, similar measurements were made to determine the small quantity of fuel in the lower heads. This material is also inaccessible to the defueling tools. Through additional defueling and measurement efforts, the remaining ex-vessel debris has been removed or shown to be of little concern. By removing the five plates in the lower core support assembly, access was gained to the 15,000 pound mass of re-solidified fuel debris located in the lower head. This mass was broken up using a 40 foot long chisel, much like one would break up a large block of concrete. After the breakup, the debris was removed using an airlift tool. With this tool, a new record was set. 32,000 pounds of fuel debris was removed in a single month. When most of the debris was removed from the lower head, badly damaged and melted in core nozzles and some cracks in the welded stainless steel liner of the reactor vessel were discovered. New tools were designed and built at TMI to inspect and measure these cracks and the size of the badly damaged nozzles. A miniature underwater color television camera was used for the first time during this inspection. The height and width of the nozzles was determined. Now the cracks were probed with a device a little smaller than an eighth of an inch in diameter. This probe could be inserted into the cracks to a depth of approximately a sixteenth of an inch. The cracks were gone over with a wire brush. Cleaning them provided proof that the cladding itself was damaged. Eventually, pieces of the vessel, including these cracks, will be cut out and examined at laboratories in the United States, Japan, and Europe. Eight hundred sixty four bolts were removed from the baffle plates using a hydraulic impact wrench and a specially designed drill. Following bolt removal, the plates were moved to gain access to the ten thousand pounds of fuel debris which had been deposited behind them during the TMI two accident. Some of the debris located behind the baffle plates was nicknamed the meatloaf. The meatloaf and other fuel debris was broken up using a 40-foot long handled tool to strike, break, and dig at the debris. This brought the pieces down to size for vacuuming.
With the size of the fuel debris reduced, an underwater vacuum system was used to load debris into fuel cans. Now, this vacuum is very similar to the underwater vacuums used in swimming pools, only much longer. You see, it was required to lift debris from under more than 40 feet of water. With the baffle plate defueling almost complete, only about 10,000 pounds of fuel debris remains to be removed from the reactor vessel. The remaining fuel in the reactor vessel will be removed by the end of 1989.